This is the second video in this series that teaches how to use Git. In this episode, we'll pick up where we left off working in the planets directory. Um, and we've already initialized that planets directory as a Git repository. We can see that it has a .git folder. And so far, our status is that we have not made any commits yet, and we've created no files to work with yet. And so this episode will pick up with creating files. We are going to use a text editor called Nano again. So we're first going to make our first file. Um, which is a study of Mars. So we'll say nano mars.txt. So we're creating a file called mars.txt. We'll go ahead and press enter. And then let's add some text into the mars.txt folder, cold and dry, but everything is my favorite color. So Dracula likes the color red, and so Mars is its favorite color. All right, so we'll go ahead and save the chain this this file we've created and the text we've put in it. Um, we can hit Control X to exit out, and it asks Nano asks us, do we want to save the changes we've made? We do, so we'll press Y. And then Nano asks us, do you want to keep the same file name? And we do want to keep Mars.txt, and we'll press Enter. So here we can check with ls, and we can see that we've created that mars.txt file. We can also cat mars.txt to the screen, and we'll see that we have kind of two lines in here. The first one is has text on it, the second one is blank so far. You may not have made the blank line, but that's all right as well. Now let's see how git status has changed now that we've created this file. So we'll type git status. Still tells us we're on branch main, that we've not committed anything yet, but now it tells us that we have untracked files. And in red, it shows us mars.txt as a file that is untracked. Gives us a little hint here about what we're gonna do next, um, but it also tells us that there's nothing added to commit but untracked files present. So it's telling us that we've created a file and we probably wanna track it with Git, but we haven't yet thus far. So there's two steps to every time we want to save a version of our file in the history with Git. Um, the first step is to tell it about those changes with add. And so we will type git add mars.txt. So we're saying this is mars.txt is a version that I want to keep in my history and I'm going to add it to what's called the stage. So this is the group of things that will be saved together when I do the next step, which is called commit. So let's check status again and see what it looks like now that I've added it to my stage. And so you can see here, again, the top two messages are the same, but it says changes to be committed. So it's saying there are changes, I have a new file mars.txt and I know about it and I'm ready for you to save those to my history. Um, and so the next step we'll need to do is actually commit those changes, actually make a point in the timeline of Git history that includes this file at this its current state. And so to do that, we'll type git commit. So we're going to commit it. And a git commit requires a flag or requires a message. So we're going to add it the dash M for message flag. And we're going to leave that breadcrumb I mentioned. We're going to tell it a little bit about what this, this history point is. And so we'll say start notes on Mars as a base. And we can go ahead and press enter. And once we've done uh, the commit, we can see that it sees this is it's committing to the main branch. And this is the first commit, so it's calling it the root commit because it's the very beginning of our history. And then it has this unique identifier code, sometimes called a commit hash. Um, and this it's, commit hash is actually much longer than this. This is a shortened version of it. And then it repeats back the note we left. And then it gives us a little information about what's changed, what it recorded in the history. The, the file changed and it has two insertions. Those are two lines and that it's in the create mode of this type. Okay, let's see what happened with git status when, once I've committed. So now it's back to saying nothing to commit and it says working tree clean, which is a, its way of telling us there are no new files that, uh, that I think you want to track um, that have, or any files have changed. So everything is up to date in our, in our repository. 
Now that we've done this process once, you might be thinking, when I save my file, all I have to do is save it. I don't have to do these two steps. Why do I have to do two steps with Git? Um, and that's actually a feature of Git that's very helpful for us because when we add things to the stage, we could add multiple different things to the stage as well. So say we had two files that are closely interconnected and we made changes to both those files, we could record them at the same point in history by adding them both to the stage and then saving them. So we can group things together. It allows us that flexibility because it's two steps. Otherwise, when we committed it, we would have to commit everything all at once. Um, and so it's not is we don't want to commit. We want to be able to commit things at our own choice. So we always tell Git about it with Git add, and then we go ahead and run the actual committing step and run Git commit. And it actually makes that point in history. Okay, as we continue to build up history, um, we'll learn another command called git log, which shows us the history of that we've built up in this repository. And so we can take a look at what git log shows us here. So here's that commit hash I mentioned, and this is the full commit hash instead of the shortened version of it. Um, it also tells us that our, our head, which is where we're currently looking at, kind of like the current folder you're in, in the Unix shell, is pointing at main. So we're currently looking at the, the main branch of our repository. It also shows us all the history of, the, that shows us that history of commits. Um, and so in our case, we only have one commit, but it has the author and the author's email address. And then it gives the date and time along with uh, the time zone. And again, a sh message of what the, the commit was about. And so we're gonna keep building up a history of these, these commits. And so next we'll edit our file again. We'll type nano mars.txt to reopen mars.txt. And let's create a second line. So to it, we'll add the two moons may be a problem for wolf. Man, so Dracula is a, a considerate collaborator and considering some of the issues that Wolfman and I encounter with having two moons on Mars. Okay, and we'll go ahead and save this and exit out with control X to get out. And then we would like to save our changes. So we'll press Y, keeping the name the same, we'll press enter. And so that you can still see it on the screen, I'm gonna type cat mars.txt so you can see the changes to the files. I always like leaving a blank line at the end of these files. So um, I do typically, it, it's a little, Git sometimes will tell you when there's no blank, uh, no new line at the end of a file. And so I like to leave a blank line at the end. Um, and so we have our new line, which is two moons may be a problem for Wolfman. Let's see what Git status shows us now that we've made this edit. Git status. You can see now it says that I have some unstaged changes, so changes not staged for commit, um, and that I've modified mars.txt. So it's seeing that I made a change to mars.txt, and that's a file that it has a history of, and it's telling me that those changes are not yet saved with Git, they're only saved to the file system. And so I can go ahead and commit this, but before I do that, let's imagine that I walked away for a couple hours and I came back and I couldn't remember what changes I made to mars.txt. I was like, I know I did some work, but I don't know what it is. And so here I can use a git command to kind of look at what's changed from the current version of my file, the modified version, to the last committed version. So I can type git diff, and if I do it by itself, it's gonna show me diff on all the files. I only have one file at this point, but I like to be specific. So I'm gonna say mars.txt. I wanna look at the difference there. And it's printing out this nice preview of the difference. It's telling me from the difference between the last committed version and the current version of Git is that I've added this new line here. And so it shows me all the differences with Git diff. Okay, let's go ahead and commit our new changes. We'll try git commit dash M and we'll say add concerns about Mars effect moons. Uh, oh, sorry, about effects, effects of Mars moons on Wolfman. Close quotation marks. Go ahead and press enter here. And you can see it actually printed back my status message to me instead. Um, this is because 
I did not add it. I didn't have anything added to the stage. So it said like, hey, there's nothing here. Instead, I'm gonna show you what the current version of your files are. So we forgot to add it. So let's type git add mars.txt to add it to the stage. We'll type git status to double check that it's added to the stage. It says it's ready for those changes to be committed. And then next we'll run our commit message and again. We'll type git commit dash m add concerns about effects of Mars moons on Wolfman. All right, and it committed again to the main branch and printed out my, my message and tells me I changed one file and I added one new line here. Let's take a look at our log and see where it is right now. So we'll type git log. Now we can see we have two commits. It shows us the full commit hash for each of them. And the information and the history of, of our, our repository so far. Let's continue building up our commit history and we'll add another line to our file. We've been doing one line at a time, but you could imagine that this is a script that you're working on. And instead, maybe you added a whole function and then you committed it. And that comes back to this question about how big could, should, could, should commits be? Should I commit every single line I've changed? Um, I typically suggest you try and commit things in meaningful chunks. Like I added this functionality, I did this one big thing. And so trying to add them in meaningful chunks for you as the developer, because those are gonna give you the versions that you can go back to. If that meaningful chunk is a line, then you would might want to commit after every line you add. Um, if that meaningful chunk is functions or particular functionality that you wanted to add to your code, then you'd want to commit after those. So you have the history um, in those discrete chunks. All right, we'll type nano mars.txt. And I'll add a third line, which is but the mummy will appreciate the lack of humidity. All right, we'll save and exit with control X and then Y and then enter. I'll cat mars.txt to the screen. So we can see we have that third line of text now. We can also use git diff, again, to see that we've, since the last time we committed, we added a third line, third line of text. Now let's add this to the stage. We'll type git add mars.txt. Let's see what happens if we type git diff now. And so if we see, it doesn't print anything out. So by default, um, Git doesn't always look in the stage for changes like that. And so if we want to compare it, we can type git diff dash dash staged. And then it will compare the stage to the last commit. And so now we can see that we added this extra line in here. And let's go ahead and commit. We'll type git commit. Let's see what happens if we forget to use that dash M flag. And we go ahead and type git commit and press enter. And so this is where our configuration came, comes in. So since we set nano as our def default text editor, our core editor in the set up the configuration steps earlier, it popped up nano for us. If we hadn't set that, we would use DVI by default or whatever configuration you've set up your core editor to, it will open that text editor. And here it's saying, hey, you need to actually enter a commit message. You forgot a commit message. And it says it's gonna ignore anything that starts with the pound side, so we don't have to worry about this extra message. We can type our commit message right here into the text editor. And so we'll say discuss concerns about Mars climate for mummy will be our message. And I forgot a space in there. Let me go back and add it. And I will say I have collaborators who like to edit their commit messages in their text editor all the time. So they never use the dash M flag. I don't like it popping up. I like to write my, my text 
for my commit message in the line as I do it. And so I prefer the dash M flag and I'll continue to use that throughout the lesson. But if you prefer to use your text editor to make that commit message, you can do that as well by leaving the dash M flag off. And here we'll hit control X and we'll go ahead and press Y and enter. And now it went ahead and saved our commit message. Now, if we type git status, we should see that everything is um, saved. All the history of the we've done so far is, is built up. And so let's type git log and look at our history of commits. And so we can see now we have three commits. You can imagine that this com this git log might get kind of long eventually. Um, if we have more commits than can be displayed on a single width of or a single height of our Unix shell screen, it'll actually open less that pager so that we can page through the, the log. Um, but we can also do some slight modifications to our git log command so that we can see portions of it instead of the whole thing. If it's really long, maybe we don't want to see the whole thing. So let's change git log, we'll type git log. If we type dash and then a number, it's gonna give us that number of most recent commits. And so let's say we wanna see the most recent commit, we can type one and it will give us the most recent commit. If we type git log dash two, it's gonna give us the last two commits. So the most recent two commits. Another modification I really like of git log is adding dash dash one line. I press enter there. Here for every commit, it gives it one line. It gives us that shortened hash. And then the, the, the description, it doesn't tell us as much information about the author, but it can be really useful. There are some other modifications to log that can be really helpful for, especially if you're working with multiple branches, because you can look at how those branches relate to one another. And so I recommend looking at the manual for the git log command to find some of those uh, modifications to git log that you might commonly want to use. Here we're going to do a series of challenges. So take a look at these commit messages, which Commit messages do you think would be most appropriate for the last commit we made to mars.txt? Pause here if you'd like to think about the answer, and when you're ready to go over the answer together, unpause and we'll talk about it. All right, let's talk about these answers. So the first commit message here changes. That's not super helpful for us. It's not very descriptive. It, of course there are changes, it's Git, and I had to had to make changes for to make a commit. And we wanna leave something that's gonna be useful for us down the road that we can use. The second line here, added the line, but the mummy will appreciate the lack of humidity to mars.txt is actually a little too descriptive, right? It repeats the exact information that is in the file. And so we don't necessarily wanna go that descriptive either. We chose with the third option, which is what we actually used, um, is discuss the effects of Mars climate on the mummy. And that option is a nice, nice mix. It tells us the meaning of that change, um, but doesn't repeat the exact text. And so summary of those changes that you can add in your commit message. And so think about ways you can try and keep your commit message informative and short. Um, typically, actually the first line of a commit message, you can make multiple lines of, of in your commit message. The first line is the short descriptive text that's typically you're trying to keep it under 50 characters. And then if you want to add a more descriptive uh, description to your more descriptive commit, you can add another line after that and then type more information. And that, that extra information in the commit gets hidden most of the time, but is still there in case you need to see it. So um, if you need to write longer commit messages, you can write a short one, make a blank line, and then write your longer commit message there. Okay, here's the next challenge. Which of the commands below would save the changes of my file.txt to my local Git repository? And so take a look at these options and see which you think it is. And then when you're ready to talk about the answer or see what the answer is, please uh, press play and continue on the video. All right, let's talk about the answers here. So this first option, git commit dash m, my recent changes, it wouldn't work unless we had already 
added the file to the stage. And so this by itself is not enough for the to save the changes of my file.txt. We need those two steps, remember? The second one isn't quite right because it has git init instead of git add. Remember, git init is the command we need to type when we first start a repository to set it up and tell git, I want to keep track of all the files that are in this folder. And so that git commit init command is not quite what we wanted there. The third answer is the right answer. It has git add my file.txt, and then the next line would be git commit dash m my recent changes, which we've talked about is not a very good um, commit message. You probably would want a more informative commit message and also maybe a file that has a more descriptive name while we're at it. Um, but this one would actually let us save the changes of myfile.txt to the Git repository that we're in right now. And then finally, this last one won't work um, because you're trying, it has dash m, or sorry, myfile.txt after the, the dash m flag. So um, the commit won't work because we didn't use the add, so we didn't add my file.txt first. And what it expects after this m dash m flag is in quotation marks the message that we want to associate with that commit. And that's not what we gave it. We gave it the name of a file. So it'll probably give us an error when we try and run something like this last one. This is the end of this episode on tracking changes for this Git lesson set of videos. See the next episode for more information about exploring the history of your files and continuing to build up a rich Git history.